Hey guys, and welcome back to another Unfiltered Gamer board game review for the game Final Fusion by Gindy. It plays two to four players, 60 to 90 minutes, and ages 13 and up. And in the game, you are trying to attempt to complete the Final Fusion. You're going to select two alliances and put them together, basically making a deck builder of sorts with two separate decks against up to three other players. They are also going to select two characters, which are fleets, and you're going to place them down on a board that gets progressively larger based on the number of players in the game. In the game, you'll be drawing cards from your deck, utilizing your cards as actions, actions on spaces, or even your own homeworld space to gather population, to gather fame from defeating uh, people in combat, as well as, of course, to populate the different worlds. That will allow you to gain the XP, which will also allow you to then gain the final fusion, the main marker in the game that's going to allow you to win. Holding that for a whole round is all you need to do, but it's much harder than it sounds. Utilize your tactic cards that you'll be gathering from the different alliances that you choose, work together with your opponents in order to defeat your enemies who are on top and stay ahead in order to gather the required components to get the final fusion underway. Will you succeed in gathering the fusion materials needed or will you be left behind with nothing in your bag and somebody else gaining what they need in order to succeed? Find out in this deck builder area control strategy game right now. Before we do my review, let's go ahead and show you down below what is in the game and how to play. Welcome to the game Final Fusion. Let's talk about how it's set up and then we'll talk about how to play it. First of all, select the number of players. Each player is gonna get a player board. Each player is going to get a baggie that should hold cubes, it should hold two of these stands, and it should have a character that you're going to choose. Each player will gather two random, one of these uh, factions here, place these cards down, and gather the cards along with them. There should be four cards for each faction, and when you gather all four cards for both factions, you should run into two decks of four and you'll put them together to make a deck of eight and you'll shuffle this up and this is your deck to start the game off with. Each of these are also going to get their unique uh, three population markers and there's going to be a total of five that you can get on your specific board there. Set aside all the rest of your cubes, place one on the domination track at the beginning start and colonization track at start as well and I would also suggest you place one of each of the players cubes in this little battle arena here area this area over here. The first player will get no science. The second player will get one science, the third will get two, and the fourth will get three. Science is a value that you can use to spend to buy tech cards. After you've gone ahead and gathered your specific two classes, your standees, as well as your little base markers, placed all your cubes down in the areas you need to place them in, then you're going to go ahead and set the board up based on the number of players. In a two-player game, it's a five board setup. These are five different uh, locations. They'll be shuffled up and you'll be de dealing them out. These are all the extra ones. They have an A side, and a B side for more advanced gameplay. For a basic setup here, we're just gonna go ahead and set up five of the A sides, A in the left hand corner, and then we're gonna also place the black holes in the area in which the book tells you to, and in this case, it'll be right here for a two player game. Take these XP tokens and place them down on the little planet underneath the population track right here. After you do that, then you will go ahead and take the tech decks. There are two of them. One's green and one is going to be this pink color. Shuffle them up and place them down somewhere within reach of all players. Take the tech market and go ahead and take all the tech cards, shuffle them up, and then deal out one to each of the tech spaces provided in the market board. After you've done that, place the rest of the deck down and you're basically ready to go. Any extra tokens like science, XP, and black holes, along with, of course, the final fusion marker are to be placed to the side and then decide on the gameplay mode, the shorter game, or if you want, there's gonna be another one called the longer game mode. And begin, place each of your starting uh, allies or your starting factions in the areas in which the book tells you to, or if you're playing the more advanced game mode, you can go back and forth in selecting spaces. Each space has an available action down here. It's going to have an available XP until it is removed and it will have colonization spaces that you'll start from the top and go down to the bottom. Each player will draw three cards and the player who has no science is the one who's going to start the game off with. And of course, like we said, this is the second player because they have one science, so this player will begin. On your turn, you can actually look at your player reference card and it'll tell you what you can do. Uh, you're going to be able to select uh, one of your factions and then you'll take two actions and then you'll select another faction. And after that, then you're going to do the cleanup and the next player will get a chance to go. So here it says, choose a fleet and perform two actions. And actions have this symbol here. These are all the base actions. You can move, uh, which is moving from one space to another. You can space jump, which will let you move to any, sp uh, which will let you move to any space. Um, you can also move for two across a black hole marker. 
Uh, you can mobilize to gain one of any of the resources, whether it be population, which are these blue cubes here, or science, which is this little token here, or of course, you can other, uh, also draw a card from your deck, because you're never going to draw cards at the beginning or end of your turn, only when you lose combat or take an action on the board or via one of your cards. You can use a locations action, which will tell you that there's going to be an action marker there, it'll tell you a cost, and then it'll give you a benefit. So. For one action, you can lose one population to gain three science. One action will give you two science. One action, a science, and a population. And so on and so forth. This symbol means you draw a card. Another thing you can do is colonize. Uh, when you colonize, you're basically going to attempt to have enough attack value. You'll take one card from your hand that's going to have an attack value. So for instance, if I took this one here, the base attack value is three shows you right down here, and you have three of these guys here, and population will total into attack value, so three and three is six, which is high enough to be to take that, so you'll take one of your tokens off here and place it there. These will be used in combat, which is very, very valuable. Um, and you can go ahead and place them in any spaces, and whenever you actually take a colonization action and you succeed, you'll move up on this track and gain the available rewards. It could be drawing a card or a science, gaining a trait, so on and so forth. Um, another thing that you can do is you can start to extract uh, uh, start extraction or your final fusion. When you try to do, do an extraction, all you do is you take this and place it next to you. And at the, the next turn, no one has beaten you in combat, you'll take this and place it on your board. These will give you a bonus to combat based on the play of the game. In this case, it tells you in order to get the final fusion, it's going to cost you minus five combat. But for every one of these XPs you have, you'll get plus five combat. Very, very useful. So gathering these is important. It'll take you an entire turn. If no one beats you in combat or tries to steal it from you, you'll place it there and it's yours forever, giving yourself a boost to the final fusion, which is what you need to do. And then, of course, you can also go for the final fusion, which is what I said before. It functions the same way, but you have to be on any space here, not on your home world. You place it on your character, perform the final fusion, and you win with the benefits and uh, potential negatives of the short or long game. And, of course, people will try and stop you from that. That's the most important thing in the game. And finally, you can play a card in your hand with an action ability. All your cards in your hand are going to have unique benefits uh, to them. This is an action you can use for the card. This is base damage. Action, base damage. Sometimes you'll have stuff like a tactic here, which will allow you to do certain things during combat after playing cards down. Free actions you can use on your turn, and so on and so forth. These can be very, very beneficial throughout your gameplay. Um, and that's it. That's basically the idea of the game. You'll choose one, you'll take two actions, maybe one, and then maybe I'll take this action here, choose another one, maybe you'll go ahead and uh, get, take this action here, giving you a population, and also letting you draw a card. And then you'll also go ahead and try and take this thing and place it here, and that's your two actions. You'll move on to the next player. At the end of a round, or at the end of a player's turn, there's a couple things you need to note. You're going to have to discard down to five cards, if you have more than five, reduce your science value down to five if you have more than five, and you'll rest restock the tech market. These cards are cards you can buy as a free action on your turn. It's going to cost you three science for this one, tells you the type it's a tech card, has a specific unique ability to it for combat, and then a base attack of three. At the end of a turn, you'll simply replace it with a new card if that card has been taken. And whenever you take a card from the deck here, you'll place it into your hand, and when it's used, it'll go to your discard pile unless it says otherwise, and that's how it will start forming your deck. And the only way, like I said, to draw cards is if you lose combat, if you potentially win combat by some on-battle effects, or, if, of course, if you take an action on a player board or, of course, on a homeworld board, um, and take a card in that way. Cards are very beneficial. They help you win battles. You need as many as you possibly can have at every single turn. And that's the idea of the game. Go around the board, utilize your actions to for each of your specific fleets, attempt to gather XP, use the XP to complete the final fusion. The first person to do so is the winner. One small thing I want to talk about now is combat. Combat's very interesting. And actually, combat is displayed here. And the way it's going to work is pretty simple. You're going to count allies, colonies, and traits. And the only way you do combat is you're going to have to move into a space uh, with another player. Now, if you ever do that, it initiates combat instantly. And there's no action involved. You will add up the value of all of the colonies in that specific area for the specific player, and of course, if there's somebody else. So for instance, if I was playing a three-player game and this was a, a, a green cube, he could choose to work with red or blue, giving them a bonus in value. So you'll calculate these values here, two for red, one for blue, or if this was green, green could choose either or to give an extra value. 
your population for that specific uh, fighting uh, fighter is going to have uh, an effect too. So red will start with three, blue will start with two, blue gets a plus one for this, and then red gets a plus two for this. And then, of course, you'll check to see if there's any other things like traits that could give you a benefit. You move on to both players playing down a tactic card. So each player will play a card face down. After both players play a card face down, then you're going to go ahead and move on to uh, playing planning cards. Planning cards have that symbol there. It's basically a little, a little brain symbol. And uh, if they have them, so let's say this guy has a couple more cards in hand. If he has them, he can play them. So this guy doesn't have any, so he can't do that. And this player over here does. So he can go ahead and add plus two to combat, which he will. So he'll then play one of these guys here, giving himself uh, plus two in combat. And then this player will have a chance to until they both pass. After that, then they move on to gathering the supports. These are little eyeballs. And you can go, okay, I, got, do I, I, don't, have an, I don't have an eyeball. Okay, I don't have an eyeball. Then you'll pass that. And finally, you will ta calculate all your scores. You'll basically be flipping these guys over and you'll add up the bonuses. So this one gives you a plus six. Wow, he's just a monster. One, two, three, four, five, and six. This one gives you a plus one and then plus two for every adjacent black hole, which is just one here. And the player who has the most is the winner. And there's a little chart to explain what happens to winners and loser, losers of battle. But regardless, you'll discard all the cards that you have into your discard piles. Um, players who lose will typically have to run away. If they run out of population, they'll have to go to their home world. Uh, players who lose will also end up drawing cards from their deck. Winners are going to stay on the location and will gain certain benefits. will be able to keep their specific fusions that they're trying to gather and so on and so forth. But that's how combat works. So that's a sneaky aspect of relying on allies. Um, of course, adjacent allies are also going to give you bonus points as well. There's a bunch of different little bonus points, but just for a basic idea of combat. But anyway, that's it. That's all I want to talk about. I just figured that was really relevant because there's a lot of combat in this game and it doesn't cost you anything to get involved as long as you just move into an adjacent space with a bad guy there. If you walk into your own space, you guys are just chilling saying hello. <laughs> all right. Final Fusion is a mix of area control meets a little bit of a deck builder and an alliance-based cosmic-y encounter -y sort of game. Selecting your two different factions will give you two specific characters, and let me just say all the miniatures are very, very well done. These ones here are prototypes, so they're going to be a little more uh, breaky than the, what you're going to be getting. They'll be basically stronger and harder plastic, but they look beautiful and they are highly detailed. There's additionally a ton of different locations with an A and a B side for if you want to play the advanced mode or if you want to play the basic mode there's also a shorter game and a longer game variant the shorter game is more of like a quick race whereas the longer game is a little bit more strategic in nature because you get less value from each of the ex or xp that you're going to be gathering throughout the game utilizing alliances is very important in the game and so you're going to be needing to work together with people that are below you um and p to to deal with people above you so that first player is always going to have a little bit more competition but never enough where it's overwhelming and they can't actually win. Um, it does, like I say, have a lot of the cosmic encounter vibes to the game. You have this specific spacecraft or fleet that you're attempting to do a specific thing and hold it for a round. Other people are going to kind of go against you and you need to basically play a card down, utilize any special cards face up, work with your alliances, work with any of the, uh, bu the, the things you've managed to save throughout the game on the different locations to generate more uh, power for your side or for maybe an opponent's side that is kind of working together with you. Uh, alliances are very shaky in this game. You're never going to hold one for very long and it's always going to be based on strategic requirements that you need to apply in order to make sure that you have a chance to win the game. You're never going to feel like you're out of this game. There's always a possibility to win and even when uh, you have everything that is required in order to win, everybody's going to be gunning for you. If you're going to be trying to gather that final fusion together, expect everyone to be on you because that's when it really counts and if you're not careful and you utilize it too early when people have cards somebody else will steal it from you and then they're going to be the one to win if they can hold it for the entire round and so it has it kind of like pushes it forces this gameplay to interact as soon as you go ahead and grab that thing because people can choose to to take it or hold it for that round and so the fights continue up until the point where nobody has any cards left so sometimes it's even better to not continue with the final fusion even if you manage to stop somebody uh, all the different locations are going to give you a special bit 
a benefit or ability. They're very, very useful. If you can't afford to or do not want to gather an ability on specific locations and you're not on your home world, then of course there's basic abilities that let you do certain things like move or if you want to gather a specific resource of a, a certain type that only gives you one. Those are options as well. So you never feel like your turn is going to be completely wasted. Even when you die, it's going to allow you to be brought back into the game. So you only lose one turn for losing all of your population, which is basically a, a fairly good deal if you ask me. And which makes the game continually feel like you have a shot. There's a chance to gather that final fusion so that you can win. And of course, even when players are ahead of you, you can work together with your opponents to push them back down to your level without them actually losing any benefits that they have progressed through. So for instance, XP that they have gained or any population they've placed on the board, you're never going to go back to zero in this game, which I really, really, really like. And of course, there's also the trait cards. Traits are going to be enacted whenever you go across these specific tech trees on your game board. These are super useful. Having the choice is awesome as well. Having things that change your character's abilities as you go throughout the game is nice. There's already a lot of characters presented just in this prototype, but utilizing those specific traits, um, the fact that there's two different types and you can select either one gives you a lot of variability. Speaking of variability, there's a deck builder associated with the game. Every single faction is going to have four cards. When you get two of them, you'll get eight cards. And then throughout the game, you can go to the tech market and pick up your favorite techs. They go straight into your hand and you can utilize them and they stay in your deck unless otherwise specified. And all cards have a variety of uses, whether it be just to place down a specific card in order to give yourself a battle advantage, or if you want to use something like a tactic, then you can go ahead and use the top ability, Daring Combat, to give you a potential benefit or a straight up benefit that will help you in some way. With on victory and on loss conditions, that can benefit you or harm your opponent as well, which is, uh, I really, really dig that. Uh, resources are easy to gather in this game. You know how it's done. The gameplay is very easy to learn for a complex game. It only has like six pages of rules in the entire thing. You can read this whole thing in maybe about 10 minutes or so and understand how to play the game. So even without watching my walkthrough of how to play, you'll still understand it quite easily. All the artwork, solid. This has great artwork. I would give this artwork 9 out of 10. That's how satisfied I am with the style of artwork. Tension, <laughs> competition, interaction, social aspects to the game. This has a whole lot going for it, and I really enjoy it. Negatives of the game, if you're playing a two-player game in the short mode, it becomes more of a race than anything, and once somebody acquires that final fusion in their location with their character, it's very likely that they're going to win. And so because of that, when playing two players specifically, I always like to play the longer form of the game because it gives you more of a tactical tactical advantage to not want to take that as soon as humanly possible because it's not worth as many VP bonus points or, or strength points as you try and gather it. And so you need to be more tactical in how you choose to utilize them. Uh, black holes are desperately annoying for those who cannot control them, but if you can, you're going to need to utilize them correctly in order for it to benefit you as opposed to harming you and specifically putting those black holes in two specific areas that block lock off somebody from being able to enter into your space and then like trying to acquire this might literally block somebody off from simply being able to ever get into that area other than unless you're able to warp to a specific location which can end your turn and thusly they, they'll just straight up win um, however that may may work uh, some character classes are better than others in my opinion just as how they play but they all they all have a varied like sense of use and how they're going to be uh, manipulated throughout the game is going to be based on the player and some require more social interaction than basic gameplay uh, interaction as far as like one might be plus one but one might be plus one and plus three if you can guess the base power of your opponent's card that they played face down so you have to choose which class you want to play based on your play style not necessarily based on the style of the character or the artwork of course uh, but otherwise this game is really solid play this game on the advanced mode play this game with the longer version of the game and you will see yourself interacting and having a ton of fun time uh, uh, it's definitely going to take longer with more players, it's going to take longer with the advanced mode, and it's going to take longer in the long version of the game as opposed to playing the short one, which was actually rather quick, maybe even up to 30 minutes. That's how fast that this game can go, specifically because it's so easy to play. Uh, now, my positives to the game, uh, artwork is excellent, the quality of everything in the prototype, I expect it to be even better when it's done, and I'm very excited about that. The way you utilize the cubes in order to gather population is really, really nice. The fact that it's got not only a deck builder, but also traits, and there's a ton of them that you can utilize. You're using science to gather traits, and while it's fairly easy, you won't be gathering too many of them, um, well, the tech cards, I should say, and because of that, you're going to constantly be having new cards in your deck each and every time you play this game. You're never going to really have to worry about replay 
replayability in this game. Uh, most games you want these days, but this one specifically. And of course, the fact that each of the characters are uh, bright, beautiful, highly uh, detailed, and of course, something that I would love to paint with also little, little aspects like, of course, player aids is super nice. And the fact that it has a battle board, which makes things really easy to understand and everything is put in its place and everything that has a place has a reason for it to be there. Overall, an excellent, fun, game that I think anybody who likes area control, who likes the game Cosmic Encounter or Chaosmos, who really enjoys sci-fi space theme game with that kind of like stylization of those specific games, this is one I would not have you guys pass up. You should at least take a look at it and decide for yourself. If you're interested in the game, there's a link down below on the Kickstarter where you can go ahead and back the game. Tell me what your favorite classes are. Mine specifically are the chess stars. Those are like the chess type warriors that look like knights. And then of course I like the black knights. They are the ones able to move the black holes, manipulate them and prevent players from getting across without having to spend double actions, making it too late for them to get to you if you can time it right precisely when gathering that final fusion that you need in order to win the game. All right, guys, that's all I got. Let's go ahead and hit the outro. Thank you guys for watching another Unfiltered Gamer board game review for the game Final Fusion. If you enjoyed this video, check out the rest of our videos here on YouTube. Like, subscribe, hit that subscribe button, and of course the bell button there in the corner so you can see more of our videos and it does help us with the algorithms. You can also go ahead and check out our website, unfilteredgamer.com, blog posts, giveaways, Kickstarter lists, and more. We're moving, so we'll have a new studio in the next week and a half or so if I can manage to get everything done it's gonna be a bigger brighter and more beautiful set and I'm excited to show you that so as the days progress you'll start seeing less and less stuff in the studio because well we gotta start moving stuff Moonshell prototypes coming in this week in the next couple days here I would probably show up today but I think it's a holiday so in the next one or two days is when you're gonna see it and today being Memorial Day which is technically not today but it will be when I put this video out all right guys thank you so much and as always I look forward to completing the final future <laughs> completing the final fusion without you next time.